Hello, my name is Katherine Turner and I'm the director of the Fit for All Moms program. The Fit for All Moms program was put into place by Dr. Sheila Devineson, one of the obstetricians from our All Children's Hospitals OBGYN and Associates group. All Children's Hospital Foundation provided the funding to bring us a great program that looks at nutrition, exercise, and proper weight management in pregnancy. Some of the goals for our program are to educate moms about appropriate weight gain in pregnancy, encourage exercise, healthy nutrition during pregnancy and beyond, to minimize excessive weight gain, to help us stay healthy and give us healthy habits for a lifetime, and to introduce healthier lifestyles to families. Moms are the leaders of the families. They make choices for the families uh, as far as food and activities most of the times. So it's good, it's good to have a good role model to provide healthy behaviors for our children. Many of you, when you're looking at weight gain during pregnancy, have probably heard about the 30 pound weight gain. Most people will tell you it's okay to gain 25 to 30 pounds during pregnancy, but this might not apply to everybody. It all depends on where you start in pregnancy. You know, if you start a little bit underweight, you might have to gain a little bit more. If you start a little bit overweight or even obese, then you might want to gain a little bit less. We use a tool called the Body Mass Index, otherwise known as the BMI, to look at people's weight. What they do is they do a comparison of your weight and your height. That gives us a great tool to be able to see which grouping that you sit in to be able to allow you to know how many pounds you should gain in pregnancy. When we're looking at normal weight, for example, we look at this chart, we say that a normal weight gain uh, might be 25 to 35 pounds to somebody who has a BMI of 18 and a half to 24.9. But if we see somebody with a BMI that's greater than 30 or 40, then we may want to have less uh, pounds gained. And we see here the 11 to 20. Excessive weight gain in pregnancy and being overweight in pregnancy can definitely put you at risk and lead to a lot of different complications. There are many different uh, ideas of pregnancy and what we have to, and how much weight we have to gain. Sometimes people when they're pregnant feel like it's necessary to eat for two. Well, it's not really necessary to eat for two. When you're pregnant, you're really required only to have about 300 extra calories a day. This is equivalent to about one snack. The most important thing to remember is that when you are choosing your foods and your snacks, that you try and choose those that have the nutrients that you need. Folic acid, iron, and calcium are some of the ones that you may hear your doctor talk to you about. It's important when you're looking at your meals to make sure that you choose a variety of foods from a variety of food groups. Weight gain in pregnancy can also cause many different complications. Sometimes people that uh, gain too much weight in pregnancy can have babies that are larger in size. This can lead to more difficult deliveries, can also have problems with the deliveries where babies are injured because they're larger, and also increase your risk of cesarean birth. When babies are born larger, sometimes they have a hard time maintaining their stable sugars after they're born. So by watching your weight and having good weight gain during pregnancy can really be impactful on your labor and your delivery. Mom's good eating habits can carry over during pregnancy. So we always try and tell moms to try to make healthy choices during pregnancy, have balanced diets, eat foods that have needed nutrients. When moms eat foods, especially a variety of foods, it introduces these tastes to babies. And so maybe when the babies are born, their little taste buds are more accustomed to these foods. And so they'll make healthier uh, choices as well. Looking at BMI again, BMI over 40 is a pretty high BMI. And when moms have a BMI over 40, sometimes the physicians will talk to them about maybe even losing a little bit of weight. We don't want anybody to go out and go on a diet without uh, first talking to their physicians, but sometimes that is something that we see happen. Looking at this chart, we see, okay, baby's only seven to eight pounds for your weight. So where does the rest of your weight go? We see here that it goes to helping your baby grow. Different things like your amniotic fluid, your uterus, the growth of your breasts, all of these um, take that weight gain. The one thing that is important to remember is that when you're pregnant, physicians usually will recommend to you that you should gain only one third of all the weight you're gonna gain in pregnancy at the beginning of the pregnancy or the first half. The second two thirds of the weight you're gonna gain should be gained at the second part of your pregnancy when babies are getting bigger. Studies have shown that 0.7 of every pound you gain over the recommended amount during pregnancy 
is retained after pregnancy. So if the doctor recommends that you gain 20 pounds and you gain 30 pounds, it means that you gain 10 extra pounds. So you would retain seven pounds of that weight. Excessive weight gain in pregnancy can cause gestational diabetes, which is problems with your sugar and being able to manage your sugar with your insulin. Sometimes mommies, if they gain extra weight, they end up with high blood pressure, especially in the later part of pregnancy or the third trimester, they call it. This can actually affect your baby's growth as well. Excessive weight gain in pregnancy can lead to increased discomforts and have more pelvic and back pain. Makes it really hard to do normal activities when you're uncomfortable and can even lead to missed work. Excessive weight gain in pregnancy can also lead to complications in delivery. Sometimes moms that are obese can go past their due dates. This leads to bigger babies, longer labors, and sometimes increased risks of cesarean birth. We see our C-section rate right now, our cesarean birth rate, up to about 30%. And we feel like this is really impacted by weight gain during pregnancy. So how do we make it all happen? What's the recipe for a healthy change? First thing you have to do is say, hey, I'm at risk, but I can change this. So what do I gotta do to change this? Look for people around you to support you. Look for exercise programs or many resources online. Friends and family can be supportive. Make healthier nutrition choices. Make the decision that you're gonna exercise. You're gonna make it part of your lifestyle and you're gonna stick with it. Good nutrition is the key. A healthy diet includes foods from all the food groups, making sure to include essential nutrients like alpha omegas, calcium, iron, folate, and vitamin B. Those are just some of the ones that are important. Listed are several examples of nutrients that are recommended during pregnancy. So we see on this chart here, calcium for teeth and bone formation, a big one that doctors will talk to you about is iron. We get that from red meats and green leafy vegetables like spinach. Folic acid is another of the nutrients that you may hear your docs talk about. A lot of times people take a supplement during pregnancy. You can get the folic acid from some cereals and breads and so on, but it's really important to prevent spinal cord defects like spinal bifida. Others that we see are the B vitamin group, helps to give us energy. With the babies, it helps nervous system development. We get them from eggs and dairy, those sorts of foods. DHA uh, is for brain development. Fish, fish oils, vegetables all contain these. So when you're eating, you want to be thinking about these nutrients and if the foods you're eating contain those. A great resource that you can use for planning healthy meals, because it's hard to do it if you are not used to. So if you've decided to make a change, and you're sitting down and you're trying to plan healthy meals for the first time, a nice tool that you can use is to go online to a site called choosemyplate.gov. There's great areas in there where you can set up meal plans, personalize them to your likes and your dis dislikes, but on the other end, making sure that you're getting all the nutrients that you want. It also looks at uh, pregnancy in particular and the tools for pregnancy. It talks about food and serving size, uh, both when you're pregnant and when you're breastfeeding. So make sure to uh, check out that website. Remember a long time ago when we used to look at food groups, we used to look at the pyramid. And that was kind of like, it It was. It looked like a pyramid, a triangle, and it had different areas, and different food groups that you were going to choose from. Well, now we have the new MyPlate model, and it looks at different food groups. Now the old pyramid used to talk a lot more about eating a lot of grains, and that was the primary one that it recommended. Now with MyPlate, we're looking more at an increase in the amount of veggies that you're eating, the amount of protein that you're eating. We want to have about three to five servings of vegetables a day, maybe three servings of fruit, we want to look at dairy. Usually with dairy, it's about three or four servings. We still want to have about six servings of grain and six ounces of protein. So you can see we have a nice variety from all the different food groups. This shows examples of what a serving size looks like. Because a serving size to me, and I know a serving size to my husband, looks very different. So I'm sure for you, you have your own idea of what a serving size looks like. So this chart shows several of them. It makes it easier for you to make choices. With your serving sizes, sometimes we find that if you eat small frequent days or meals throughout the day, it's better than just having big meals, you know, at three different times. When you eat small frequent meals, it allows the calories sort of to be spread through the day, and that way you end up keeping your metabolism at its best. Try not to skip meals. So hopefully this will be helpful when you're making those choices. Fats are present 
everywhere and fats are needed by your body. You need about five to six teaspoons a day. Just try and use them sparingly if you can. And if you're going to use fats, try and use the ones that are more favorable, like your olive oil or your sunflower oils or your canolas. This chart shows just the serving size. A lot of the times when you're looking at diet pans, it may say to you, oh, you need to have like three ounces of, of, of meat or uh, a cup of this. And it's hard to really look at something and know, wow, is that steak three ounces? So this chart gives you an idea of what uh, three ounces looks like or what a cup looks like. So it is a useful tool and you can find it online as well. Here are the daily recommended servings depending on how many calories you want in your diet. So if you're working with your doctor and they tell you, well, your BMI is over 30, we'd like to have you be on an 1800 calorie diet. Then looking at this, you can see that that would mean that you would have three servings from the milk, five from vegetables, three from fruit, eight starches and six ounces of meat, and then your little bit of fat. It also breaks it down to 2000 calories and 2200 calories. When you're looking at eating, try to avoid foods that are high in cholesterol, trans fat, hydrogenated fat. Try and bake, boil, and broil things because this helps to reduce the fat content. You want to watch out for sugar and sometimes the labels don't just say sugar. Sometimes it can be hidden and it may say fructose, glucose, evaporated cane, honey, or sweeteners. So you want to look for all of those words. Remember it's better to have natural occurring sugar like those that you would find in fruit. When you're choosing your grains, try and use whole grain wheat products and make sure that you remember portion size again. Snacks are always great, especially if you're doing the small frequent meals through the day. These are some examples of healthy snacks. Snacks are usually about 250 calories. Anybody who loves nuts, pecans or almonds, cashews are great choices for snacks. Some of the different trail mixes are good. Becoming familiar with your food labels is definitely important uh, if you're going to be trying to be eating healthy. Um, learn to read them. Uh, make sure that you um, are able to see if there's a fat content, sugar content. Look at the nutrients that you would heard were important for pregnancy. Are those nutrients present in this food label? So you want to um, be able to start to look at the labels. It's kind of a lot of fun and you'll be surprised when you start to read food labels what's, what's in there. As well as eating, drinking is important and when you're pregnant, I always tell moms, carry your bottle with you. Have a bottle of water with you everywhere you go. You can put slices of cucumber in it or a little bit of orange or lemon to make it more tasty because sometimes people will tell me, you know, Catherine, I just don't like water. I just can't drink water. Just do the best that you can do, but try and get that six to eight glasses of water in each day. It's so important for you. It helps keep you hydrated. It helps prevent constipation. People always say, oh, well, how can drinking help with swelling? It does. It helps to keep the kidneys flushing well, helps prevent bladder infection, which it can be more prone to when you're pregnant. And you are you are drinking for two, so it's great. Um, when you're making your choices for drinks, try to avoid drinks that have like sugar additives. Try and use the 100% fruit juice if you can. As well as making the right food choices, it's always important when you're pregnant to make sure that you're handling your food carefully. When you're working with any raw meats, always make sure to be washing your hands, clean your countertops, and wash any utensils or dishes that have touched that carefully. Most people do it when they're not pregnant, but you should be really careful when you're pregnant. Always make sure that you thaw foods properly, like put them in the fridge to thaw them or microwave them or put them in water and submerge it. Try to keep anything that's going to be perishable or that goes bad pretty quickly into the fridge within a couple of hours after eating it just to make sure that you don't have any bacteria that forms that can harm you. Some of the bacteria that we see that are foodborne are listerosis and we see that in milks and soft cheeses. Sometimes uh, if there's chickens or meats that are undercooked. Uh, salmonella, you hear about that a lot on the news. Sometimes restaurants, if uh, meats aren't cooked well enough or raw eggs, things like that can cause salmonella and toxoplasmosis. I wouldn't recommend cleaning a litter box when you're pregnant because we see a higher incidence of that from people cleaning the litter box, but make sure you always wash your hands, especially before handling food if you are dealing with litter box. Lunch meats like hot dogs too, uh, make sure that you're cooking them. Make sure that the water's steaming when you're cooking them so that the bacteria is killed. 
bacteria in your food can be harmful to you, but remember you have baby on board, so bacteria can be harmful for baby too. Some foods that you may enjoy um, when you're not pregnant that you shouldn't really have when you're pregnant are caffeine, can lead to frequent ear, uh, urination or having to pee all the time. Um, you can actually get dehydrated if that happens. And we're always talking about drinking, drinking when you're pregnant, so hydration definitely is key. It can keep you awake at night. And you already have that big belly, already having a hard time sleeping, so we don't wanna have anything else keeping you up and caffeine will definitely do that if you drink it. Try not to eat foods like shark, swordfish, mackerel, tallfish. They have high levels of the methylmercury in them and sometimes that builds up in the fish and it can cause damage to your baby. So we don't recommend that you use those. Uh, no more than 12 ounces of fish a week if you are a fish lover. And uh, remember that three ounce serving size, it's about the size of a deck of cards. So if you're trying to figure out sizes, that's important. Liver too, too much vitamin A. And vitamin A can be toxic, especially to your developing baby. So can we exercise when we're pregnant? Yes, most certainly you can. Actually, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends about 30 minutes of exercise about five days of the week. It's good to write it down, put it in your calendar, make it part of your daily routine. It helps you feel healthy and gives you energy when you're pregnant. You wanna feel your best, so exercise is important. The benefits of exercise are similar to when you're not pregnant, but when you're pregnant, you have that extra weight in the tummy, so you want to have a nice strong back. You want to be able to have a healthy heart and lungs, gives you stamina when you're, you do go into labor. So if your labor is long, you'll be able to tolerate that better. Helps to take away back aches, helps to prevent gestational diabetes or problems with your sugar when you're pregnant. Exercise overall is a great stress relief. And when you're pregnant, you're thinking about, you know, how are we going to do this? You know, we have a baby coming on board. What about childcare? Do we have enough room at our house? Uh, everybody seems to move when they get pregnant. So definitely when you're exercising, it's a great way to relieve that stress. It's important when you're thinking about exercise to talk to your doctor. Make sure that you're okay to exercise. There are some conditions where people shouldn't be exercising when they're pregnant. Uh, if you're having bleeding or spotting, if they tell you that the placenta or the afterbirth is lying low, or maybe you have placenta previa where the placenta is actually covering the opening from the uterus into the vagina. Sometimes if people are having risks of miscarriage or maybe you have premature births in the past where your baby came too early. Those may be reasons why your doctor may tell you not to exercise. So you should always check with them before you start to exercise. Always start your exercise with a warm up get you, you everything flowing, kind of stretch out those muscle groups, and then uh, gradually work up to about a 30-minute workout program. If you haven't exercised before, remember just start slow. Don't go out and overdo it because then you won't want to exercise again. And remember not to exercise to the point of exhaustion. So you should always be able to talk and not be breathless when you're exercising. So what do we need to exercise? Okay, you want to have your water bottle with you. You want to be able to have... Um, Eat something, a healthy snack, before um, you start to exercise. You always should wait a little while before starting exercise after you eat. Make sure that you wear loose, comfortable clothes. Cottons are nice here in Florida, especially where it's hot. They're nice and breathable. Boobs are getting bigger, so wear a supportive bra. Also, make sure that you have good footwear. Drink water all through your workout, before, during, and after. When you're breathing heavy and you're exercising and then you have baby on board, sometimes you lose a little more fluid than you would normally, so we always recommend to bring water with you. Exercise on a flat, level surface, no deep sea diving, no white water rafting, okay? And like I said before, uh, don't exercise to the point of exhaustion. If you do have leaking, bleeding, dizziness, bad shortness of breath, anything that you notice that just isn't 100%, maybe talk to your physician before you go back to exercising again to make sure you're not overdoing it, to make sure that you don't have to modify anything. So like we talked about, make sure that you warm up and stretch for about five minutes. Do about 15 minutes of cardiovascular, so that's uh, activities that help to bring your heart rate up. So whether it's walking or swimming or dancing, uh, those are always good things to do. Make sure you don't get out of breath. Be sure that you can do the talk test. And if you are having difficult talking, then maybe just slow it down, take nice easy breaths. 
when you end your exercise, try and slow it down at the end so that you have a little bit of a cool down and then stretch it all out so that feels very good. So when you're thinking about an exercise program, different activities you can do, um, swimming, it's great. Especially here in Florida, a lot of people have pools or a lot of community centers have pools or the Ys, it's a good way to get to a pool as well. And it's a wonderful aerobic exercise. Yoga is great too, it helps stretch everything out. It helps to deal with a lot of those pains when during pregnancy, helps to make you more flexible. Something else with yoga that I like is it teaches you breathing techniques because I was a labor ner delivery nurse for a long time and uh, I'm a Lamas instructor and the one thing in labor that is really helpful to know is how to breathe. It really helps with your overall labor, uh, helps to keep you calm, helps you tolerate pain and it helps with your pushing. All low impact aerobic exercises, whether maybe even riding on a stationary bike, being on a treadmill if you don't like being outside, walking in the mall is always a good thing too because it's air conditioned. All of these are definite possibilities for exercising during pregnancy. Now, if you noticed when you're pregnant, um, your body is changing. So sometimes when you start an exercise program, you'll have to modify or adjust it as you get going. You know, your uterus is getting bigger with the baby growing. Um, as you get further along in pregnancy, um, you're a little bit heavier, you feel a little bit clumsier. Um, so sometimes you just can't exercise as long as you used to be able to. Um, the center of gravity changes. Um, people uh, change the way they stand um, and kind of do that little waddle when they're pregnant. Um, so even with walking, sometimes we're changing the way we're doing it because of our body changes. So definitely you want to um, Pay attention to that and listen to your body when you're pregnant and adjust your exercise routine accordingly. Always try to be safe. Do low impact activities. Always modify as you need to. Remember, take breaks if you need to take a break. Bring your water bottle with you. Uh, drink during, before and after. And if you're exercising out in your community or walking in your neighborhood, that's always a good idea to bring your phone just in case you do need any help if something was to happen. And see such a special time in your life. Enjoy it. Just be good to yourself. Try to make good choices with nutrition. Try and exercise. Develop healthy habits so when that baby comes, you'll be able to be a good teacher and teach them healthier food choices and better ways to enjoy life. Have more energy for baby. Have more energy for life's adventures. Have less stress. Be more energized. Try and stay at that recommended weight to avoid diabetes and other diseases. I hope this was helpful. It's been such a pleasure to share this information with you. And remember, healthy choices lead to healthy pregnancies and healthy babies. Thank you.